interact with oxygen to produce a high energy proton. That proton is a charged particle which can move faster than the speed of light. So I happened to make a scientific oversight in that last video I made about shine discovering Sharenkov radiation during fusion. And the person who happened to bring it up to me was the CEO of the company I work for, Shine. So let's go ahead and turn this into a good learning moment where I can make a video talking about those neutron interactions from fusion with water. There was two interactions that I talked about there. The first interaction being the neutron slowing down and being thermally captured by hydrogen. All of that that I said there was correct. It produces a 2.2 MeV gamma that goes on to interact with electrons, making them go faster than the speed of light. The mistake I made was right here, high energy proton. That proton is a charged particle which can move faster than the speed of light. There, Did you catch that? The interaction that I talked about there was 100% accurate. The problem is the proton moving faster than the speed of light. That's not actually what's happening. The interaction that I was talking about there was when a about 10 MeV neutron interacts with oxygen, it can cause a proton to be ejected. That proton is probably not going to be any greater than about 10 MeV even if it is interacting with a 14 MeV neutron, which is what the deuterium tritium fusion creates. So how is it that a 10 MeV proton not move faster than the speed of light, but that 2.2 MeV gamma produce electrons that do move faster than the speed of light? Well, it all has to do with mass. So in order to travel faster than the speed of light in water, you need to go 225,000 kilometers per second. When you calculate out the speed of an electron going 2.2 MeV, which is 2.2 million electron volts, you go much faster than 225,000 kilometers per second. But a proton, since it has over 1,800 times more mass, even though you have a lot more energy, 10 million electron volts, you only go a fraction of the speed of light, which is why the protons produced by the fusion interaction with the water are not producing Cherenkov light. But the interactions of neutrons with oxygen-16 still can produce Cherenkov. That is because when oxygen-16 ejects that proton, it turns into nitrogen-16, which is a radioactive element with a very short half-life and high-energy gammas that are produced. In fact, they're more energetic than the gammas that were produced by the hydrogen interaction. These gammas have plenty of energy to interact with electrons that can go faster than the speed of light. Now, when I talked to the CEO of Shine, one of the things that we talked about was that when you turned off the accelerator, which cut off the fusion, the Sharenkov light went away very quickly. And if all of that Sharenkov light was being produced by nitrogen 16, it would have faded away slowly because nitrogen 16 has about a seven second half-life. It could be a combination of both the hydrogen interaction as well as the oxygen interaction. It's possible when the fusion stops and the hydrogen interaction goes away, the nitrogen 16 decay is just not visible. Hopefully in the coming months here, there will be a study done on this to actually figure out exactly where that Sharenkov light is coming from.